Welcome to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. We're back again with the DevOps Dojo with a new episode on customers and trust. So tune in. Welcome to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. With us this week, we're continuing on our series about the DevOps Dojo. And with us this week, we have two guests. We have Paul Feinvandrat and Kitty Chu. Welcome both. Thank you. Great to have you both. Paul, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone out there and tell us what it is you do at Microsoft? Thank you, April. I'm a, a principal consultant at Microsoft, helping customers to transform their organization from a traditional waterfall organization to a product-centric organization that is uh, adopting cloud. Um, and that's my daily job. So I do a lot of uh, uh, management consulting uh, to help managers transform their organization. Awesome. So you have some great real life experience that you've brought to the Absolutely. dojo then. Absolutely. Yeah. With Ken. Very cool. Now, Kitty, what do you do for Microsoft? Um, so I'm a senior, uh, senior customer engineer um, working with Microsoft uh, worldwide to help customers successful in uh, adopting cloud technologies. Um, so a particular practice in, um, in ITSM um, do, uh, DevOps um, really related less on the technology side or, uh, side of adoption and more on the people and uh, process side of adoptions, because generally those are the things that we uh, we have oversight of. Absolutely. And the people side is the hardest thing to change. So thank you both for coming in and sharing your experiences. I think, Paul, you're going to kick it off and give us some scenarios of some of the customers you've worked with. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the hardest thing indeed is to transform uh, hearts and minds of, of people that are uh, used to do their work in a certain way, sometimes for decades even. Um, and the other thing is to attract new talents as well. So both of these uh, play a role in, in the transformation that I'm in with customers. So an example, for instance, a multinational retailer. Uh, recently uh, had a new strategy where they really want to be more customer centric and um, they needed to be able to um, uh, to play um, a role in the retail market in a different way. Uh, they had to cope with uh, digital competition. Um, so uh, they wanted to become a leading tech company in the in the food industry. Um, and therefore, they started a conversation with us on, okay, what does this actually entail? And uh, not only technically, but also culturally and for our, our people and, uh, and our organization. Uh, so we interacted a lot with them on, on our experiences with other customers. And in the end, they said, okay, we really want you to help us uh, skill, train and coach our existing employees I and mean, also help us to evaluate our new employees. Um, so this really uh, resulted in a, a long lasting uh, uh, transformational uh, project that's still uh, going on by the way, uh, where we trained a lot of their teams, uh, but also helped them to apply what they learned in their daily practice uh, with the DevOps Dojo that you, uh, that you read about in the blog. And even beyond that, so we are the, after that, they also said, well, we really also want you to help us uh, do a similar kind of training on more managerial and C-level. Um, and that's something that we are going to, to plan in this year uh, to help those leaders also um, understand what the transformation is about. That's awesome. So you've been able to, to help the organization from kind of their existing employees to the C-levels to new talent coming in. What did you find was one of the biggest hurdles or hiccups you had in that project that you had to overcome? Or might still be overcoming? Yeah, still be overcoming, yeah. Yeah, well, it's it's uh, it's easy between brackets to start in a area of the organization that where you have uh, enthusiast people that really see the North Star already. Yeah, that, that's easy. Uh, it's it's much harder to uh, get people uh, motivated to go down this route if they are still comfortable what, with, with what they're doing, mm -hmm. still making a lot of money with what they're doing. Uh, so why bother? That's that's uh, the, the real hard thing. And then uh, this leadership thing really is important. So that's why they're planning this leadership uh, um, um, dojo. 
to discuss that with C level uh, and and to get them inspired uh, also with other customer examples on okay that it really can be done. Um, and it's not a big bang scenario. It's really the, the way we do it is start small and then expand. Once you mm -hmm. get the feel of it, then you can replicate and, and uh, show success fast with, with the team. I think that's the essence of uh, how to get people started and motivated and inspired. And that's what Dojo is all about. It's really about inspiring people uh, to do things in a different way um, and to be more successful with uh, with a product that they're building. Absolutely. And and that yeah. is true. People don't always see the reason to change. And, and that's why we talk about the people side being the hardest thing to address with DevOps. Kitty, you have some great customer experiences. Go ahead and walk us through some of your experiences. Um, I probably want to follow the line of Paul related to, you know, um, customer want to do a DevOps transformation, yet, um, that's what the leaders say, but then that's what the business priority or somewhere got uh, cascaded down to the management level and then they try to roll out to, to the organization. Um, there's a lot of resistance in terms of like uh, uh, adopting DevOps. Um, one of the reasons is because people just doesn't know. So um, in my line of work, I do a lot of cha uh, adoption and change. And one of the framework we use as well, um, it, it's uh, ACA which uh, stand for awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and um, uh, managing resistance. So it's very important to actually to understand that each individuals have that in, uh, had a change journey. So um, first of all is people actually don't, um, a little bit resistant is because they doesn't know, they, they're not, they don't know what DevOps is. They don't have that awareness. Therefore, they're not motivated. They didn't, they got cascaded down what, with that this is a priority, yet they intrinsically, they don't have that motivation. So time to time in my line of work is I do help customers um, to educate, um, to educate customers in all levels, uh, uh, all level. Uh, sometimes it may be there is a champion within my customers who say, hey, we want, you know, he, he, he loves DevOps. He, he just say, we should do this now team. And lo and behold, you know, he, he's being, had this, um, uh, internal inertia so from the management team or from the parent company who say, you know, this is not worth the investment to the engineer who say, I'm very comfortable in doing what I'm doing. So therefore, um, therefore they, 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 ha they struggle with this challenge in terms of uh, adopting uh, DevOps worldwide. Um, and really it's like, this is really related to what we talk about, you know, um, trust, right? Trust is about competence. Uh, it, it's about um, you know, getting that incremental success um, so that they actually starting to understand, starting to apply and starting to have that desire that, yes, I will make this step to do it because I've seen it. I have seen the result. Um, I, I, I understand. I've seen the result. Um, therefore, I now starting to trust this process, starting to have that motivation to do more and also to um, advocate it within my peers. Um, so it's a, it, it's, it, it is a people, like that adopting DevOps is a people issue. It's not like a, something you can buy off the shelf, which what a lot of management principle things is about whether build or buy. Usually prince, um, management like to buy rather than build. And from my customer experience that those who buy from externally never get great results. And that's so right. And I think you said it perfectly, Kitty. It's that incremental change and getting that feedback mechanism. So that's why when we talk about DevOps being cyclical and having that feedback, you make an incre in incremental change and then you improve upon it each and every time. And you're right. You get those champions within an organization. They see one side of the business or that one group doing really, really well. And it spreads. And that that technical capability spreads and understanding that we can we can make this change. And, you know, this group over here made these changes. These are the benefits. We have some you know, stats, maybe customer satisfaction, maybe improvements on features, whatever it is they're building or pushing, and maybe just overall team performance, however they measure their teams, their OKRs. Um, so those are some really, really good points, Kitty. Thank you. Paul, I think you have another customer story for us. Yeah, so so this transformation that we were just talking about is great if you have the time. Eh? So you have nice triggers uh, from the market to change, eh? and, and then you have time to really uh, build it up throughout your organization and, and then uh, things can still be difficult, but you have more 
time to do this. But I also have some customers that uh, more and more customers come to me and they say, well, I have actually two things. It's one, I need to really f move my workloads fast to the to the cloud, to the public clouds. And sometimes they need to exit the data center, for instance. But they don't want to just move their workloads. They also want to modernize them uh, while they move them to the public cloud. And once they are modernized, they also uh, really want to make sure that the, the, the teams that uh, are, are uh, responsible for managing building and managing those workloads, um, understand what the modern, the modernized application is about, and also that they apply DevOps practices uh, uh, while modernizing and maintaining that uh, application in the public cloud. So we now come into customers that say, well, let's say I have half a year to move all my workloads to, uh, to Azure, to public cloud, but you also ha have to help me in the same time frame. Uh, to uh, not only modernize these workloads with their teams, but also tra skill, train, and coach them so that they can actually operate those workloads when you are, are leaving as Microsoft Consulting Services in this case. Um, so this is a really yeah, a bit more challenging uh, situation because we have a, a strict timeline and a, a very uh, high interaction with the migration team also. Uh, to make sure that we hit both uh, um, yeah, targets in the same time. So we have several, two customers, at least uh, in my area now, that uh, have a similar situation like this. And uh, they, we are just uh, uh, engaging with this, uh, uh, on this with them. So uh, yeah, very, very good to see that they also um, realize that it's not only moving stuff, but also owning it afterwards and, and really making it real uh, uh, when you're when you're in the cloud as well absolutely yeah. and i think that that you're right it adds a whole other element and prior to doing my current role i was in engineering and we were moving customers to the cloud refactoring their app and introducing those devops uh, principles within a very strict time frame and you're adding a lot and it's a great time to add those principles in but it is also yes you're you're fighting those tight time scales so that's massive undertakings and and knowing what's going into that so this is all great information. Kitty, can you tell us about how we can learn more about the customer stories and trust and get more detailed information on this topic? Um, so we, in the DevOps Dojo is a community, the Microsoft, who love, uh, who love um, DevOps. Um, we do have a community blog that uh, is available on the link um, downstairs. Uh, on the uh, below the screen, so you can actually read more about it. Uh, we do have a series of uh, blogs coming out to share share with you our stories, on our experiences um, in the field and also internally. Um, it's a it's an amazing journey for, for myself personally, and I hope and we have like shared this with you in the blog. So hopefully you will enjoy reading them. Thank you, Paul and Kitty, for joining us today. For those of you following along, we have the link for the blog in the show notes. So take a moment, get a read, and get more in depth on the DevOps Dojo, along with customers and trust. And thank you for joining us today. And join us again next time for our next video in the DevOps Dojo series.